Okay, hi guys, welcome to Biology Online with Annie van Vieren. Hey Year 13, welcome back um, to another lovely lesson <laughs> on um, trends in human evolution. I'm actually finding this one really quite interesting, so I'm hoping that you do too. Just um, remember, if you need me for anything, I am always available on Teams, or you can just email me, um, reach out to me. Okay, you guys are not alone. I don't want you to feel stressed and I don't want you to feel that you're not being looked after. Um, please, um, it is important that you guys are safe and that you are happy, to be honest. Um, yeah, so today we're going to move on from the skeletal and the brain development and so forth. We're going to actually look at cultural evolution and how the actual culture and how they developed the culture had a then a reverse effect again on our biology, um, which is really quite interesting how it, it is like a feedback loop. So without further ado, yes, some more death by PowerPoint. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. Death by PowerPoint. Ha ha. See my funny joke I made? Anyways, um, yeah, so cultural evolution. It's all about how we developed from um, Ardipithecus and all the way through um, to Homo sapiens and as we developed a bigger brain and more complex thoughts with those more complex thoughts came more complex and abstract things like art and tool making and so forth okay so frequently the questions in the final year exam is on art tool making making um, around the fire etc. So the use of fire. So the earliest evidence of humans using fire was approximately and they say humans but obviously we weren't there so hominins was approximately 1.5 million years ago. So Homo erectus we think was first to make fire um, and they could have captured this from wildfires that are caused by lightning and so forth. Um, so with fire, with fire, the early humans could remain active at night, and suddenly nighttime wasn't that scary anymore. Using it as a as a source of light, also a source of protection because it protects themselves from predators. They could also cook the food. Now remember, we had a mutation that made our biting muscles smaller, and now we could actually cook the food. And because we're cooking the food, it makes it softer and it makes it easier to then extract the nutrients from it. So evolutionary, we have actually developed to um, to cook our food. It, the two went along. Also used to prever preserve uh, food by smoking. Um, help them to make better weapons and tools. So hardening of spear tips and other wooden tools. If you take a spear tip and you quickly heat it up really high, you're drying it out and it becomes a really hard piece of wood. Same later on when we entered the Iron Age, um, but that's obviously way, way further on. Along. And then warm themselves and therefore they could migrate to colder regions. So if you could take fire with you or you had the knowledge how to make fire, you could keep warm even though it's really cold. So indications of Neanderthal culture so the Neanderthal actually buried their dead. Before they buried their dead, the basically it, they just left their dead because, well, he's no longer with us. And there was no suggestion that there might be an afterlife or anything like that. But the Neanderthals, we think, were the first to start burying their dead and they left them some stone tools that positioned the body and they found buried found them buried with burnt animal bones, stone tools and flowers. And the position and orientation of the buried body are consistent and aligned east-west with the legs curled up. Isn't that interesting? So they actually thought to themselves, okay, we're going to put our head towards where the sun comes up and our feet towards where the sun goes down. And that is the orientation. And if you go to some cemeteries today, you will still see, for instance, um, people of Islam, they actually will bury themselves, I think the orientation is towards Mecca or, and I know the Jewish 
um, people also bury themselves in a different way to to Christians and um, just the secular people. Um, it, yeah, that's why you have diff definite different burial areas for different religions. But anyways, um, so they were found body with some buried with some stone tools. And the position or orientation of the buried body are consistent with east to east, east to west. A flute-like piece of bone has been found, suggesting that Neanderthals may have had music. And that is um, a drawing of that. Um, <laughs> what type of music would Neanderthals play? It's probably rock. Get it? Because they had rock and stone tools. Ha ha ha. Okay, here's some Paleolithic art. This piece over here, Venus of Holefels, is the oldest known... Um, of the Venus figures, okay, and um, about 30, 35,000 years ago, and it is out of mammoth ivory, okay. Note the exaggerated breast, buttocks, and fat in body fat in general. This one was found in Germany, Venus of Willendorf, about 28,000 years ago, or sorry, 28,000 years before Christ, um, carved out of limestone. Now a lot of um, a lot of scholars differ on why these things look the way they look, but think about it. If you're a caveman, and if you are a, an amazing hunter and an amazing gatherer, you can provide for your family so much so that they will gain weight. So the fat on the bodies probably refers to something that was desirable back in those days. Because if you can get there, it means that you're really good at what you're doing. Now, in Africa, until very recently, it was very much the same. Um, if your wife was nice and fat, they would say that you're obviously a rich man because you can supply to her. Um, which, again, just shows you the difference of how we are today, where we have too much food around us all the time. So we are trying to stay skinny, whereas they were most likely very skinny. And then, if there was food in abundance, they would put on weight. Also, some scholars said that it was most likely a fertility fetish. Because if you look at the areas that are exaggerated, I mean, look at the small head versus the size of the breast, and also then the big female body parts over there. So, um, yeah, very interesting. But these are there's a whole bunch of the Venuses. Venus of Willendorf, Venus of Hollefels, and so forth. Um, there's also some scholars that believe this might have been something to teach people about pregnancy. Um, girls who, who might become pregnant and then the elderly ladies will teach them how it works using this as an example. Anyways, um, but yeah, the, the fertility fetish seems to be the one that is most likely. So, what is this? Caveman pornography. Really old caveman stuff. Anyways, there's also some early rock art found in southern France, northern Spain, Australia, um, and so forth. And the painting of a sorcerer, you can see this is a humanoid, uh, dressed in an animal skins 15,000 years ago on a cave in the Pyrenees Mountains. Here's some more in the La Salle Caves, um, containing some of the earliest known art dating back to 25,000 years ago. And interesting, this red that you see is um, ochre and ochre is for the chemists out there it is iron oxide so it is a soil that is rich in iron and then the iron would rust and ironically that's the same stuff that the Maori used to actually um, if you think about their wood carvings and their wakas and so forth they're all red and so they used the same thing for that whereas but they would actually take shark fat and then boil the shark fat until it turns into shark oil, mix that with the iron ochre and then use that to treat their wood to protect the wood against insects and also so that they can make it waterproof and so on. And as you can see here, cavemen also used it for their lead red colouring. Okay, so is obviously a, a horse and on the right an aurochs, now an extinct giant ox. Okay, is painted over earlier images of reindeer. So there at the back is the reindeer, and then this guy decided, oh well. So graffiti is not a new thing. Um, 
One of the most famous examples of Paleolithic art is found in the caves of La Salle in Dordogne Valley, France. And you can see over here, it almost looks like they did that with chalk, doesn't it? It could be that they just had limestone. Okay, so here's Venus of Willendorf again. She's in found, oh sorry, not Germany, in Austria. Um, Venus of La Spug, and 14 centimeters tall, um, that looks like ivory. And then Venus of La Salle, about 17 inches tall, 43 centimeters, a much larger one. Um, there's some more examples of some of the Venuses. And most of them don't, well, we think they actually made them without feet. Um, because it would be difficult to to carve the fine detail of feet. Also, while you see no facial features in most of them. Now, if you look at um, <coughs> some of the more ancient tribes that we have photos of, um, you will see the pronounced buttocks okay, that you have there, and also, obviously, large breasts. And this was very desirable um, in Africa and other places. Um, it is a very desirable trait to have, hence why these would follow that. Now the Bushmen, which are also called the Khoi Sun of Southern Africa, which is probably one of the most primitive tribes around, because um, they still use their click language, and you'll see them soon in a video that I'm going to make you watch. Um, when they actually feast, in other words, when they have just shot an animal, they have to eat it because they have no way of storing it, and their bodies, the females literally, um, their bodies grow into this. And this again was very desirable back in the Middle Ages, uh, not Middle Ages, but in the in the not so distant past where the Europeans tried to follow this. And a famous example of one of these ladies that went across was Sarki Bartman. And um, yeah, if you want more information of that, I'll be happy to share. Okay, so then they also started hunting larger game like the woolly mammoth and the woolly rhinoceros. Um, but the ability to kill them um, was a major step. They would have had developed serious technology to make an effective weapon. They had to cooperate and work together to plan and coordinate a hunt. An understanding of the habits and behavior of the prey animals and a knowledge of the local landscape. Okay, To take down one of these was not a single guy's job. They all had to work together and this picture depicts that. You have guys with spears and axes and even stones trying to bring down one of these large animals. And obviously, if you have one of these large animals, you were set. Because, number one, they used the bone and the ivory for um, carving or to make weapons from. And then also lots of food and then the fur, the um, skins they could use for clothing and bedding and so forth. So, bring down... <laughs> required a coordinated attack and some cunning which means they had to be intelligent to think about what's going to happen and they have also might have used pitfalls traps to immobilize their quarry before they closed in for a kill so it'll work, walk across fall in the hole and then they would rush in long spears were thrust into an animal enabling our ancestors to hunt from somewhat safer distance um, than was was possible with earlier weapons these wooden spears like this one this is the oldest known wooden spear, um, along with some stone tools um, and butchered remains of animals and ten horses. These spears are currently known to be the oldest wooden artifacts. And you can see there was some genuine work put into that. Now, another example that, and I love this thing, is called the Atle Atle. Atle Atle, as the Americans say, Atle Atle. But it's basically a throwing stick. And as you can see, you hold this. Um, lever in your arm and then you throw it and there's an example of that and people still use it today uh, it was easier to master than the bow and arrow um, it's strange that it's not very well known but it really works and they drastically increase the ballistic range of the spear and if you can increase your ballistic range it's safer for you do you agree so um, yeah so here's an example of somebody using the Atle Atle and showing you how it's done. It's from National Geographic.
So this is the atlatl and this is what the, they call the dart. It predates the bow and arrow. People, I, it's really responsible for our survival as human beings. So this tool has been used more in, in a longer duration than probably any other hunting tool that mankind's used. It's got a hook in the end here and that's really the most important function of the atlatl is that hook. This hooker spur gives you amazing velocity and basically it's like adding an entire extension or extra joint to your arm. So it's like you got one, two, and then all of a sudden you got this long joint out here. And it, it not only gives you more power, but also gives you more accuracy and control. This style, you've got two fingers that lock in there. You can also make them where it's simple, where it's a stick and you, you hold it like you're holding a baton. You grip it different ways. There's one finger, two fingers, baton. And the first part of the throw is, is you're just kind of dropping into the throat executing it, you're aiming, and then the last part of the throw, you're just putting all your force into it. So it looks something like this. So that's it. This thing is awesome. Yeah, so as I say, the, it's interesting how the Adel fell out of favor in um, lots of cultures, how it then became the um, <coughs> bow and arrow. And just to show you how easy it is to learn, this is a seven-year-old boy, um, and he's hunting a deer. Um, don't worry, there's no blood in here, but yeah, have a look at this. Got him. What do you think, buddy? Good. There you go, you got him with an atlatl. Your daddy's gonna have a fit. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it, where the um, naughty grandfather takes takes the, um, the kid out. Anyways, um, I'm going to call it quits there for today because um, we're going to go into detail of the various different cultures um, when we go to Mesolithic, Neolithic um, and so forth. But this is just an introduction to that and we'll take it from there. Okay guys, as always, yeah, I hope you keep safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.